This is a brief narrative about a study recently published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, providing the first evidence of an impact of climate change on plant diversity in the Fynbos of South Africa, and highlighting an interaction between climate change and disturbance by fire that may make fire-dependent ecosystems particularly vulnerable to climate change. The study was performed in the Cape of Good Hope section of Table Mountain National Park, one of the most botanically rich areas on the planet. Falling within the Cape Floristic region, a global biodiversity hotspot, the reserve supports over 1,500 vascular plant species, that's more than the British Isles combined, in an area 1 20th the size of London. Fainbos, the vegetation that covers most of the reserve, is often likened to a tropical forest in miniature. One needs to look closely to see the intricate beauties it has to offer, but perhaps you know some of them already. Lobelias, geraniums and pelargoniums, and many irises from the Fainbos adorn gardens and hanging baskets around the world while proteas and gladioli are common residents in most vases. Unfortunately, these species and the ecosystems they occur in are under threat. While habitat loss and degradation are by far the most proximal drivers of change outside protected areas, just staving off the bulldozers doesn't make them safe. Climate change and invasive alien species like Australian wattles are far more insidious drivers of biodiversity loss, sneaking past the reserve fences. Climate change is particularly terrible, because it is near impossible to catch the silent assassin red-handed. Climate is changing everywhere, and there are few benchmarks to allow comparison. Fortunately, a botanist named Hugh Taylor saw the value of long-term monitoring, and established a set of permanently marked plots in the Cape of Good Hope Reserve in 1966. These were revisited by Sean Privet and Richard Carling from the University of Cape Town in 1996, and scientists from the South African Environmental Observation Network, SEON, teamed with researchers from local universities and several institutions in the US, and with the support of South African national parks, performed a third survey in 2010. The surveys identified all species that occurred in each of 54 permanently marked plots, and it rapidly became apparent that diversity had declined, but the driver wasn't clear. Weather records indicate that temperatures had risen by more than 1 degree Celsius since the 1960s, but the reserve also has a long history of invasion by Australian wattles and other alien species. There are good records of the historical densities of alien species for the study site, and these revealed that plots that had been densely invaded had clearly lost more species. Interestingly, this is a legacy effect, because alien species had been eradicated more than 30 years ago, but species diversity is still declining. While we don't know the mechanism, it is likely that this delayed effect is due to reduced seed banks and or altered soil properties inhibiting seedling establishment. But what about climate change? Just identifying one change driver doesn't preclude the existence of others, and if we are to have confidence in our inference, it's important that we test as many plausible drivers of change as possible. This is where understanding the ecology of the system is important and highlights an interaction between weather and disturbance by fire that potentially makes fire-dependent ecosystems particularly sensitive to climate change. Fire is a necessary disturbance for the maintenance of healthy fainbus ecosystems, destroying most above-ground biomass on a cycle of 10 to 50 years. While the post-fire environment may seem bleak and desolate, the vegetation rapidly begins to recover, with species either sprouting from underground storage organs or recruiting from seed during the wet winter period. But this is a Mediterranean climate ecosystem, and the colder wet winters that favour seedling establishment are soon followed by hot dry summers. Ecologists have long known that prolonged periods of hot and dry weather in the first summer after fire kills many regenerating individuals, affecting post-fire species composition. Unfortunately, the weather record for the site reveals that the duration of hot dry summer weather has been increasing since the 1960s, suggesting that post-fire mortality should be more severe. Different portions of the reserve, and our study plots, have burnt at different times, and year-to-year -year weather variability means that they have experienced differences in the severity of post-fire summer weather extremes. If we compare among plots, plots that experienced more extreme weather in the first summer after fire showed a significant decline in species diversity, confirming an impact of changing climate. Exploring different functional types revealed that species that re-sprout, and graminoid species, here dominated by dryland sedges and the cape reeds in the family Restionaceae, were worst affected. 
These groups are key to the healthy recovery of vegetation after fire, and their loss may affect several ecosystem functions, like carbon sequestration, habitat provision, and hydrology. This study provides the first observational evidence of a climate change impact on Fanbos biodiversity. More broadly, it highlights an important interaction between disturbance by fire and climate change that may affect fire-dependent ecosystems around the world. This is particularly concerning for biodiversity hotspots like California, southwestern Australia, and the Cape, all of which have suffered spates of fires and extreme droughts in the past few years. While variability in summer weather extremes means that any fire may be followed by favorable or extreme summer weather, it is akin to a game of Russian roulette, and as climate extremes continue to intensify, fewer chambers of the gun are empty. We'd like to thank the various funders and universities involved and the many individuals who made this project possible. This work was funded by the National Research Foundation of South Africa, the National Science Foundation of the US, and NASA. Any opinions, findings, and conclusions or recommendations expressed in this material are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the views of the funders or supporting institutions.